In March 2021, uh, my wife was diagnosed with renal failure, permanent kidney failure. And we had been in the hospital for a couple of weeks. And um, when we received that diagnosis, um, I can't even describe the feeling that we had. Uh, I know that I personally had uh, sitting in that hospital room when I was looking at my wife. And when the doctor said those words, I could see the expression on her face. And if you knew my wife, she's very talkative. She's full of joy. And, um, but at that moment, there was no expression. It seemed as if, you know, life just went right out of her, like life was over. And we spent several days there in the hospital and, uh, you know, I began to cry out to God. But honestly, even as a pastor, I'm human and I can't tell you the negative thoughts that begin to flow into my mind. I'm trying to be strong for her. But, you know, your first thought is, why us? God, we're trying to do something good. We're out here trying to build the kingdom of God. And, and uh, the enemy really began to work on my mind. Began to tell me it was all over. This is the end of ministry. Because this diagnosis was going to take over our lives. With, you know, having to do dialysis. And um, it just consumes you. And I knew my wife, she was being very quiet, but I knew that she was in a place, a very dark place, trying to get some, grasp onto some hope because it seemed like all hope is gone. You know, Lord, we got grandbabies to have and we got places to go and we got things to do. And, and um, but when that happens, when something of that tragic happens in your life, it just feels like it's the end. And uh, so negative invaders begin to come into your mind. It's what I, what I call mind monsters. As a matter of fact, I did a series entitled Mind Monsters a few years ago and um, talks about the negative invaders that come into your mind, thoughts of anxiousness or thoughts of despair and hopelessness, like there's, there's no hope for me and uh, worry and fear and, you know, we, we get fed all these thoughts, whether it's a tragic event, a sickness, or whether it's from culture or for social media. Uh, all those things feed into our minds, and and um, and a lot of times we do a lot of self-talk. We we can talk ourselves right into negativity and uh, into a dark place. And if we're not careful, those the things begin to take what the Bible calls a stronghold in our minds, and they set up fort in our minds. And and then what happens is it begins to produce mental health issues, which we've seen. Uh, Come to the surface over the last few years in our nation and um, people struggle. I'm emotional because I see it. I've experienced some of it when through this tragic event in our life, but it, it makes my heart hurt and have compassion for those um, that are struggling with those mind monsters that attack us in our mind. And what ends up happening though is that if we're not careful, those things can become our identity. I mean, if we have the mind monster of anger, um, it begins to display in our identity. You get known for someone that's angry or if you're a person that's negative, always speaking negative, that's what you get known for. It becomes your identity or a person that isolates yourself. You get known for that person that doesn't associate with anybody. And what it is, is the enemy robs us. He robs us of the joy and the peace and the love that you're supposed to feel in life. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and life more abundant. And um, that means living life to the fullest. Not meaning we don't go through tragedies, not meaning we don't have difficult times, but God's with me and he brings peace in the middle of our storm. And so, I guess getting back to the story of our lives, it's been a, almost a year ago now, and never forget we serve a miracle working God. 
I think we sometimes forget that Jesus is the miraculous, that he is the supernatural. And I begin to read all the miracles in the Bible even uh, through that time saying, Jesus, you did it for them. You can do it for us. And I think sometimes our culture doesn't even give attention to the supernatural or the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives, that God is still able to do exceedingly abundantly above all else in our lives that He has overcome for us. And so I begin to walk through that, that uh, Debbie and I both begin to walk that, that, that road and going back to what we know to be true, which is the Word of God. The Bible says that we demolish strongholds and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Every pretension, that means everything that pretends it, that it's real, like it seems like it's real when we're going through it. It seems like, you know, I'm never going to get out of this. It seems like I'm in a prison wall. I'm, I, I can't get out of these doors. And how are we ever going to see the other side of this thing? Where is the joy going to come from? And but you got to, the Bible says you got to compare that, all those arguments that start in the mind. And you got to compare those to the knowledge of God. And when you begin to think about God and how great He is, that He created you, that He knows you better than you know yourself, and compare the things that He said about you. Matter of fact, that scripture says, and take captive every thought <laughs> and make it obedient to Christ meaning that Christ came and he defeated every lie, every negative thought that, that comes against you. Realize that's the enemy, right? Sometimes we blame the enemy against ourselves because we self-sabotage ourselves, but a lot of it's just a lie from the enemy to bring you down and to make you feel like you're not worthy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and to give you life that's a victorious life that's an overcoming life. And so we have to make those thoughts, tie up those captive thoughts and give them to God and submit them to the Word of God. And so now we're not, my wife still is struggling to battle this disease, but we have given it to God. And we've seen miracles, slow, slow progression, but miracle after miracle and uh, we're trusting God every day because we know that He's given us the strength to carry on. Like, my heart is for you to know who He is. Not just know about Him, but know Him in an intimate way. And um, that, you know what? I don't know, care where you are in your life, and once you discover that and begin to walk that way, that's when the freedom, God begins to set you free set you free from those mind prisons that maybe you've been locked up in and um, chains begin to fall off your life. It doesn't happen all at once, but as you continue to walk with Him, you realize uh, who He's made you to be and the power that you have. And so I would just encourage you um, to make your own strides in finding a relationship with God and uh, find a good church home. Find someone that, that can help you, that you can be accountable to. Open the Bible, read devotions, do whatever you got to do to feed your spirit, man. And I promise you, I promise your life will never be the same. The best is yet to come. Greater things are yet to come.